In game theory, rational decisions don't always lead to the best outcomes for everyone. This paradox is elegantly captured by the Nash Equilibrium, a concept that revolutionized economics and beyond. John Nash, a mathematician and Nobel laureate, formalized this idea. In simple terms, a Nash Equilibrium is a state where no player can benefit by unilaterally changing their strategy, assuming the other players keep theirs constant. Formally, a strategy profile is a Nash Equilibrium if, for each player I, the strategy SI is a best response to the strategies of all other players. This means that the utility of player I, given SI and the strategies of others, is greater than or equal to the utility they'd get by deviating to any other strategy. A classic example is the prisoner's dilemma. Two suspects are arrested and interrogated separately. If both remain silent, they each get a light sentence. If one betrays the other, the betrayer goes free and the other gets a heavy sentence. If both betray, they both get moderate sentences. Let's assign some numbers. If both stay silent or cooperate, each gets one year. If one betrays and the other stays silent, the betrayer gets zero years and the silent one gets five years. If both betray or defect, each gets three years. The payoff matrix then looks as follows. Prisoner A's actions are rows, silent and betray, and prisoner B's actions are columns, also silent and betray. The payoffs are player A's years and player B's years. So the matrix entries are 1, 1, 5, 0, 0, 5, and 3, 3. Now let's analyze. If prisoner B stays silent, then prisoner A is better off betraying. They would get zero years rather than one year. Subsequently, if prisoner B betrays, prisoner A is still better off betraying, where they would get three years rather than five years. Thus, betraying is the dominant strategy for player A. The same logic applies to prisoner B. Regardless of what A does, B is always better off betraying. Therefore, the Nash equilibrium is for both prisoners to betray each other. This outcome, where prisoners get three years each, is worse than if they had both stayed silent, where instead they would get one year each. This illustrates how individual rationality can lead to a collectively suboptimal result. Another example is the game of chicken. Two drivers race towards each other. If one swerves, they're labeled a chicken and the other wins. If neither swerves, they both crash. Here, there are two Nash equilibria. One driver swerves while the other doesn't. If one driver believes the other will not swerve, their best response is to swerve. Conversely, if they believe the other will swerve, their best response is not to swerve. Nash's theorem guarantees that any game with a finite number of players and a finite set of actions emits at least one Nash equilibrium, even when no equilibrium exists in pure strategies. This result relies on allowing mixed strategies, where players randomize over available actions actions according to assigned probabilities. In a mixed strategy equilibrium, each player's probability distribution is optimal given the other's strategies, meaning no player can improve their expected payoff by changing their randomization unilaterally. The Nash equilibrium provides a powerful framework for analyzing strategic interactions in economics, politics, and even evolutionary biology. It highlights the tension between individual incentives and collective welfare. If you found this insightful, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more explorations of game theory and other related topics.